In this lesson, we're going to walk through how we can import Font Awesome to start integrating icons into our website. As you can see here from the finished version, you can see that we have this little phone icon here and we have a map icon. So those are, even though they look like images, they're actually just fonts and they're just characters that we can use. So that makes them very helpful because you're able to treat them like fonts, which means they scale up as big as you want. They don't get pixelated or distorted and they work quite nicely for that. Now to bring Font Awesome in, just start typing in Font Awesome into Google and then it'll take you right to fontawesome.com and depending on the version that you are using, then you may have some slight differences, some slight variations, but uh, for the most part, you should be able to use it exactly with the same workflow that I'm showing right now. So if you click on start using here, this is going to give you whatever you need in order to import Font Awesome into the website. So what we're gonna be doing is we're actually gonna be pulling in a CSS file provided by Font Awesome. And when we do that, we'll have access to their full free library. They also have a paid version, but we're just gonna use the free one. So you can click on the little copy code icon here. And then if you switch back, go to the index HTML. And now this is very important. You need to make sure that you are putting this above the styles. So I'm going to paste that in, hit save. And the reason for that is because we're not gonna do it in this course, but I don't want you to be confused in a different project. If you ever call any of the icons from the CSS file, you need to make sure because of the cascading nature of CSS, you need to make sure that you're importing it above whatever file you're going to use. We're gonna be calling it directly in the HTML though, so uh, you could technically put it anywhere. But just as a best practice, you always wanna make sure your fonts are above your style sheet calls. So now that we have that, let's see if we can actually get this working. Now I'm gonna to go to Font Awesome and you can go search for icons and I'm just gonna type in phone and you can see that we have all kinds of different icons. If they are darkened, that means that they're in the free version. If they're lightened and they're kind of grayed out, that means they're in the paid pro version. Just click on this phone volume icon, and this is gonna show you all the kinds of different variations and different things like that, which is helpful. And the way that we're going to import it is it actually gives us the HTML code right here. So it gives us a icon tag, which is represented with the I, and then it has a specific class. So the way that this works is pretty cool. It is connected directly into that CSS file that we imported. So that CSS file from Font Awesome that we just put in the index file. What this is going to do is when it when the web page finds this icon with the class of FAS and then FA phone volume, it's going to go, it's going to look to see if there is any spot where these classes are defined and it's going to find them. And then it's going to render this icon on the page. So to get this working, just click on copy code and then go back to the home page and open up the text editor. Now inside of contact hours wrapper here, let's go and let's place in that code. So we're still gonna do some work and we're gonna add some more divs to organize this properly. But for right now, let's just put it right next to each other. Hit save and hit refresh over here you can see we have our little icon there. Now we'll style it and we'll make it look good, but that gives us exactly what we want. That means that we have one, we've imported Font Awesome properly, and two, we have called it correctly. So now that we have that, there's one other icon, this little map icon. So let's come back over here and search for a map. And there you go, you can see it right here. It's called Map Marker Alt, or I'll short for alternative. So let's copy this. And we're gonna do the exact same thing down here just to make sure that we can call it inside of our address wrapper. Hit save and hit refresh and there you go. 
we have our little font awesome icon for the map. Now we're going to learn how we can move it and arrange it properly and we're going to use some other divs and CSS classes to do that. But for right now, we have now successfully brought in font awesome and now we can use their full library of icons. So we're making great progress as we're building out this project. Now, if you are curious and you're wondering if it takes this long to build out every single website, the answer is no. Part of the reason why this is taking us a while is because we're not just building out the website, we're also learning all of the key HTML and CSS fundamentals as we go. So listening and going through those explanations definitely takes longer. The more times you do this, you're going to be able to eventually simply run through and build these types of projects very quickly, especially when you get a lot of practice practice with using tools like Flexbox because those are going to be some of the bread and butter items that are going to help you understand exactly how to place items on the page, how to align them, and how to style them however you need. So with all that being said, let's keep on building this out. So as you can see here on the left hand side, we have a little bit different setup than we're working with right now. Right now, we have all of our items right next to each other, and that is the default HTML behavior. But what I'd like to do now is I'd like to start customizing this. And the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a wrapper div for all of this content. So just like we have a wrapper Flexbox container for the entire nav bar, we're now going to create a component right here that is going to wrap up our little phone icon, the phone number, and then the hours. So let's get started with that. So if we come down to VS Code and let's go to this section. So right now we have this contact hours wrapper. What I'd actually like to do is to create a wrapper for that. And I'm going to call it the left column because that's what it is. It's gonna be that left column. And if you're using VS Code, the way that you can create a div and have a class name is just by saying dot and then whatever the name is of the class that you wanna use. And then that is going to create that div and that class. And don't forget to close it off. And now let's make sure that we're nesting these elements inside. And I'm also going to move this icon out and place it above the contact hours wrapper because technically this is going to be separate. So let's hit save and let's just see what is what this looks like now. Now you can see that it's changed the color because this is no longer highlighted and it's no longer in that contact hours wrapper. So it's not blue anymore. And so this is a little bit better, except right now it's using the default HTML behavior. And instead, I'd like to use Flexbox. And this gets to a very important topic, which is that you can have flex items that are also flex containers. Because remember, this whole nav bar is a flex container and this element here is a flex item, but we can make it a flex container and then all of the elements inside can be aligned however we need to. So let's go and let's do that. I'm also gonna add a, another wrapper class for this icon. I'm just gonna say dot icon and then let's wrap this up and I had one of my early mentors who helped me understand some best practices with HTML and CSS. What he told me was that he has never had a situation where he had too many divs, but he has had plenty of situations where he didn't have enough. Remember that when you add divs, you're giving yourself the ability to have more granular control over the items. You can align them better, you can style them with, with more specificity, and that's gonna give you just a lot more control as you build out your interfaces. So now that we have this left column, let's actually turn this into a, a flex container. So let's go here 
and this is still under common nav styles and uh, also just to make sure that we are not confusing ourselves i'm going to get rid of these placeholder color items because we're going to style these differently later anyway and now let's say left dash column and then here we can say display flex and then for the we're not going to use a justify content but we are going to say align dash items and we want this to be center remember align items is going to center the elements vertically for us so now if we hit save and hit refresh that is getting us a little bit closer notice how here we have the phone icon and then we have these two elements just like we do right here and so that is perfect that looks really good and so the next step is going to be to give some styles to this icon so i think if we come down here what we're going to do is I think if we say that we want to style the icon and we want to add some margin right. So I'm going to say margin right. And I think if we went with something like 15 pixels, that would work. So let's go and see how that looks. That gives us some nice space there where you can see right in between the phone icon and the phone number. That's looking good. And then the other thing, and this is going to take us into a very important topic, which is parent-child relationship selectors. Now, if that sounds very foreign and uh, foreign and confusing do not worry uh, we're going to go over it a lot throughout this course but what you can see here is that we have this icon and we want to apply styles not only to the icon we also want to apply styles to that little i tag inside of it so notice how we have this icon class and then inside of that div we have the i tag well what we can do with css is we can grab a tag so i can just copy this and then say icon space i and that is going to say for all of the i tags inside of icon i want you to apply these styles and for this case i'm just going to say the font size is going to be 2 em now do not worry, we have not talked about this yet, so that's what we're going to discuss, this whole EM. So far, everything we've talked about has been in pixels. Pixels are what you use when you want to have a hard-coded unit of measure. We talked about this before where we said pixels are kind of like inches or centimeters. They are a hard-coded, definite type of unit of measure. A EM and its sibling REM, what these are is they are more like percentages. So when we say, if I said 1M, nothing would change here. So that 1M is going to give you just essentially 100%. What 2M is going to do is it's going to give you whatever double the normal size is there. So we're going to be able to control this font size and this is going to increase the size of the icon. So if we hit refresh, you can see that that worked. And now our icon is actually looking exactly like our icon right there. So that is looking very nice. So now that we have that, now we have this pesky little issue where we have the phone number and the hours are sitting right on top of each other. And that's not what we really want. So in the next guide, what we're gonna do is we are going to learn how to use a very powerful tool called CSS Grid to be able to build a little grid here that is gonna help us align these items.